guys, John here. I uh, wanted to make a quick uh, short update video regarding the wireless transmission. Uh, and so I wanted to go over the issue that it had with the uh, loading, if you load the game outside of the chunk area that the or outside of the simulation range of the receivers, then they kind of freak out and go crazy. Uh, and I think I came up with a fix for that. So I wanted to show you. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, intentionally load the game away from it. And after about five minutes, then come on, geez. <laughs> okay. Um, so I wanted to show you what happens. Uh, yeah, and this is my, my newest Redstone Worlds because I killed my last one. And if anybody's curious about how you figure out the timings for all these crazy things, then that's how you do it with giant chains of repeaters. Uh, but anyway, uh, so as soon as we load the area, okay. All right, so some of the uh, other receivers, so you can see that they're all in the, you know, the kind of burnout state, right? The never ending burnout. Uh, so I think I came, what, came up with a fix for, uh, you know, a fix for how you can deal with that. Uh, and so I will just show you like that one right there is address 110 or 111 zero so i'm just going to show you that it does still you know work without having to like manually go and like tear it apart and then put the burnout back together okay uh and likewise with this little one so you can see that we're still getting a signal uh so i made a new little circuit here and i'll just show you how to make it real quick but basically this should cover two different scenarios. So first of all, because we're getting power directly off the burnout, uh, the only time this torch, uh, the torch on the south facing side, the only time this torch actually gets power is whenever it's doing the crazy, you know, never ending burnout. Uh, so if you use dust coming off of that, you can use dust or I think a one tick repeater, uh, but if you go up to like a two tick or anything like that coming right off the torch, then that will interfere with it. So like if we put, okay. So this is what the circuit does. Uh, but like I was saying, if you use a two tick repeater, I think that's gonna interfere with it. Uh, maybe not, maybe a three tick. Oh, okay. Well, apparently with the circuit, even that's more stable now. Uh, but, so I noticed that before, if you saw my previous video, whenever I was playing around with the little burnout, and like, it would not go, it would just stay burning out until I, you know, broke the dust off or whatever. So I figured that you have to kind of reset the burnout. You know what I mean? Uh, so... Uh, like, like what I mean is like, even though, uh, even though you can make a burnout and it will turn off, like sometimes when we're using them as this wireless receiver, then it will go into a state to where it, like that, right? To where it never stops burning out, you know? So like this should burn out and turn off. Uh, but it's just going to keep flickering. So I figured the way that we could fix that was by actually resetting this uh, south side of the burnout. Uh, and we're doing that with this device by moving that piston. You know? So if we break that piston and put it back, then that should reset the burnout. And then we can go ahead and put this one back, right? Uh, so anyway, the, the way that the circuit works... So first you make a, the burnout again. 
and we're going to put another torch in a block okay and this is always going to be the torch on the north side it's always going to be where you get your output signal from because like i said that's the one that's always going to be blinking uh, and normally this one should stay off uh, so anyway you're going to come off of that with a two tick repeater okay and because we just activated the you know the never-ending burnout now so you can actually see what it does uh, but anyway from there we're just going to make a like a timer circuit here Uh, and this is going to do two different things. Let's see. I need to put a sticky piston in here. And put a sticky piston right there. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Overzealous button clicking. All right. So... What we're going to do here is make a, like a time delay. Uh, and from there, we're just going to make a one tick generator. Uh, and the one tick generator is going to be powering uh, the piston on the, you know, that side of the burnout. And so if I should put down that with dust, and then from there you just put dust on that one okay so you can see like if we go ahead and put a lamp there so that's uh the the receiver pretty much completed uh, and then you can take your signal off of here uh, but you can see like whenever you load the area so all those are in a never-ending burnout uh, but this one uh, and that one there wasn't uh, and so you can see like when we trip it and make it go into a never ending burnout, you can see what it does. So first of all, it pushes this block uh, to kind of refresh the burnout. And then it's going to push this block off to allow the burnout to actually complete, you know, and then we can actually have the, the receiver working properly. Let's see. Okay, uh, and so that's about it. Uh, I think that is going to be more stable. Uh, so you know whether you load, whether you you know load the game with these within the simulation distance, or uh, whether you you know load the game from out outside of their distance and then you come into their area, then using this new receiver should, you know, that should be able to. Uh, you know, refresh it without it, uh, you know, going into a never-ending burnout like that. Uh, and just in case anybody was curious, I did just just to test it here. I just wanted to make sure, but you can see that I put a receiver up there, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that you could do uh, like vertical transmission too, because of course I think it's anywhere in the chunk. Uh, so, 0, 1, 1, 1. And this one also had uh, the, new, uh, the new receiver design on it. So, you know, whenever we came into the area, this one was automatically refreshed. But yeah, so of course you could put them uh, anywhere within the chunk or within the simulation range. Whether they're at the top of the world or at the bottom, they should still work. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, and I guess if anybody else has uh, any better ideas for, uh, you know, like the transmitter, like I can't, I can't think of an easier way to do this. I know you can, you can curve it and make it, you know, like, like walls, make it look smaller, but you know, because the piston the piston is the transmitter for each bit of information, right? Uh, and then to control the piston, you have to have a comparator. And then you have to be able to, uh, you know, all the comparators cannot be fired at one time, you know? So you have to have repeaters uh, separating them. 
you know, so like in this case, you have to have a repeater that's going to power that comparator. Uh, and then from here, you have to take a signal off of that repeater. Oops. You know, and then that one has to go to another repeater to power another comparator. So I can't really think of a way to make this more compact um, or, you know, an easier setup. So, I mean, if anybody else has any ideas, uh, because the pistons have to activate one tick after the other, uh, you know, so they like activate in chains. But anyway, so that's about it. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.